fireworks are we going to see on Thursday? Uh, yeah, how sort of riveting do you expect this testimony to be? Uh, hi, Emily. Thank you for having me. You know, I, I don't know. I think there will be fireworks, but uh, I don't know that when the fireworks have cleared um, that we're going to find that anybody has really done anything wrong. Um, certainly, Congress wants to find a villain in this, and it seems that they want to uh, work the narrative that the big bad hedge funds is abusing the individual investor. But I'm not sure that that's how things are going to shake out in the end. So if you see blame, where do you think it lies? Well, I'm, I'm not sure there is any blame at the end of the day. I mean, in securities markets every day of the week, there is uh, a winner and there's a loser in most transactions. So just because some uh, individual investors may have had their trading halted, uh, and may have lost some money doesn't necessarily mean that there is any blame to to go around. Um, I think that if there uh, is a thorough SEC investigation, which is going on right now, I'm certain we may find out that some of the blame lies with these individual uh, traders who apparently work together to drive up the price of certain stocks, including, including GameStop. And how would something like that be legislated or uh, litigated or punished, if you will? Sure. Um, I don't know that there would ne necessarily need to be a new legislative fix or a change to existing rules because the Securities and Exchange Commission already has the authority it needs to punish that kind of misconduct. So, for example, the securities laws already uh, prevent market manipulation and they already uh, prevent and prohibit uh, traders from injecting false information into the public sphere for the purpose of uh, affecting the price of a security. So those, those laws and those rules are already in place. It's just a matter of the SEC running out its investigation and seeing if anybody needs uh, to be charged. What about the focus on Robinhood and payment for order flow, which, you know, Many people seem to agree is, is a conflict of interest. As I understand it, it's banned in several other countries, but not the United States. Is that a problem? Um, it's only a problem if uh, firms are not disclosing it to the customers who are trading through um, their platform. And just recently in December uh, of last year, the SEC charged uh, Robinhood with failing to disclose the extent to which it received payments for its order flow. But, you know, so long as that is disclosed and so long as the people who are using the Robinhood uh, platform to do their trading are aware that Robinhood is receiving money for it, there is no real uh, conflict and there's no violation. Now, uh, the Robinhood CEO himself, Vlad Tenev, is pushing for a reform of, you know, so-called T2 settlements, uh, the ability to sell more shares short sell more shares than are out there. Is that something mm. that you see as problematic? Um, again, short selling is not uh, necessarily problematic. It is uh, a means for uh, participants in the financial markets to hedge other risks that they may have. Um, so I don't think the problem necessarily lies with uh, anybody who is short selling any stock, including the hedge funds who have been vilified recently. Again, it's a matter of disclosure. It's important that people who are taking large short positions um, are uh, disclosing those positions, and so other market participants have transparency into what's going on. But I don't see any underlying problem with the fact of the short sales themselves. And what about, lastly, you know, companies like Reddit or Discord or perhaps even now Clubhouse, where you have folks getting into the same room or virtual room and saying, we're going to do this and we're going to do this together. Do the platforms bear any responsibility there? Hmm. That, that's a good question. And I think that's the big wild card because um, colluding among traders for the purpose of moving a stock either up or down uh, in a way that is divorced from the three forces of supply and demand can be market manipulation and other participants uh, including uh, institutions who are not themselves doing any trading, can be charged uh, under the securities laws for aiding and abetting violations. So I'd say it's a possibility. Um, and again, that's going to depend on what the SEC finds out when it's through with its investigation. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't foreclose that possibility, certainly.